In my journey of making these tutorial videos, I have gone back and forth with different methods of moving an object around the screen. I have been asked countless times, what is the best method? And there really isn't just one answer, so I wanted to make a video that explained the pros and cons of each method. The first method I'm going to discuss is translate. Now I'm just going to use a sample scene here to demonstrate this method. My objective is going to be to move this ball around the screen using a C sharp script. And I'm working in a 2D space, but these methods will also work for 3D environments. Translate moves a game object's position along the axis. It requires a single line of code and is the easiest to set up. If we create a script and attach it to the object we want to move, we simply just need to create a function to move our object. In this case, let's just call it move character. And for a parameter, let's use a vector2 reference for the direction we want to move it. Then it's as simple as writing transform.translate and then direction times time.delta time. If we want to move our object at a certain speed, we can then multiply direction by speed. Then let's define our speed reference up top, and we can set this to anything, but for now, let's just put a number like 10. And then let's call our move character function in our update function. For our direction parameter, let's just assign it to a new vector 2, and for our x and y coordinates, let's use input.getAxis so that we can move the character based on the input of our keyboard or joystick. This will now move our object one unit per second multiplied by whatever was defined in our speed variable. In this case, our object will move 10 units per second. This works great for when you need to quickly move an object around the screen, but the biggest problem with using Translate is that it does not work with collision detection and completely overrides any physics that are used on the object. That means your character will run through walls enemies, or other objects in the scene. Translate is better used in cases where you want to animate a specific object that doesn't require physics, like swiping between panels or adding points to your score. But if you're going to use physics, do not, and I repeat, do not use Translate. So therefore, whenever you're going to be dealing with physics in Unity, you're best off using rigid body. For this example, I'm going to use a different scene where we have walls and objects that we can collide with. If I was to add my translate script to this cube, you'll notice how the cube goes right through the obstacles, even though they have box colliders assigned to them. For that reason, we want to move our object using rigid body instead. So let's go ahead and add a rigid body to our cube. And let's go ahead and freeze rotation on all of our axes. Just like in our last example, let's create a new script with a float for speed and a move character function with the parameter for direction. In this example, we will be referencing our rigid body to move our object. So let's create a reference for it in the script and let's call this RB. Then in our start function, let's define RB as this.getComponent rigid body. Now that RB is defined, we can use it to move our character. But since we are dealing with physics, we actually want to call our move character function in fixed update instead of update. Fixed update is run every physics step, so this can happen once, zero, or even multiple times per frame. So anytime we are working with physics, we want to use fixed update instead. On the other hand, update runs once per frame, so it's a better place to detect our controller input. I know this part is a little confusing, but all we're going to do is move our move character into a fixed update function. And then let's create a public vector 2 for movement. And then in our update function, let's grab our input.getAxis for both vertical and horizontal inputs. And finally, we will pass it through to our move character function. Now that that is set up properly, we can focus on moving our object. 
Now there are a few ways we can move our character using rigid body. We could either add force to our object, set the rigid body's velocity, or we could use move position. Add force, like the name implies, will add a force to an object. A good example of this is if you were to accelerate a car, a force would be applied. And when you let off the acceleration, the object will continue to move until it comes to a stop using gravity, drag, and friction. To use this in code, we would go down into our move character function and simply write rb.addForce and then in parentheses put direction multiplied by speed. The result will look something like this. With our current speed, our object won't even move. So let's go ahead and double it for this example. Notice how our object moves slowly, but then picks up speed. And once we release our input, the object keeps moving until it slowly comes to a complete stop. For this style of game, this sort of movement could work, but it's not ideal. It gives the feeling that the character is running on something slippery or icy. This sort of movement would work better with objects that are on wheels or if it's floating through space or water. Another option we can do is to set our object's velocity. This will move our object at a constant rate over time. To do this in code, we just need to alter our rb.addForce line to be rb.velocity. And then let's set it to direction multiplied by speed. The result will look something like this. Notice how our cube slowly falls to the ground. And that's because when we alter velocity this way, we override all physics elements, including gravity. We have no acceleration either. The object is either moving or it isn't. But a good use for this was like in our spawning obstacles video where we needed our asteroids to move from right to left at a constant rate. And the last option that I wanted to discuss is rigidbody.moveposition. And this is my current preferred method for moving a character around the screen. The reason for this is that it allows you to move an object to an exact position, sort of like translate, but includes interaction with physics elements and collisions. To set this up in code, we just need to do rb.moveposition and then we need to include our current transform.position and add it to our direction times speed times time.delta time. Since we are dealing with vector 2 for our direction, we need to put vector 2 in parentheses before our transform position so that we can properly add the values together. If you are working with vector 3, you do not need to do this part. The result will look very similar to our translate but it will detect collisions in a much smoother fashion. Keep in mind, like Translate, objects can still transport through walls if the speed is too high. But if you keep movement at a normal rate, collision detection is much better than Translate and movement is much more manageable than using Add Force. Now that you understand the different methods for moving an object, Think about which use will be best for your game and let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. Also be sure to subscribe and like this video to help support this channel grow.